Hello everyone. So I wanted to create a series of relatively short ArcGIS Pro tutorial slash demos to walk you through some of the more often used tools of ArcGIS Pro that might not be particularly evident when you get started with it. So in this tutorial series, we're going to start with some basic stuff and then we'll segue to some more advanced elements of the program. So this is get going and we're going to get started with just simply making a print layout of a map that you've made. Sounds easy <laughs> and it sort of is, but there's a, a few tools in there that are a little bit hidden that we're going to go over. So I use ArcGIS 3.0, ArcGIS Pro 3.0. You might be using 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9. 3.0 or something beyond 3.0. The tools are relatively the same in all the different versions. The user interface might look a little bit different. If you have troubles with what you're doing, just leave a note in the comment section below. Just tell me what version you're using and then I can help you out if this video is causing a little bit of consternation for you. So I'm just going to open up a project that I've been working on. And this project is a simple NDVI or normalized differential vegetation index of an area of the campus where I work at. And so it's gonna pop up, here it is. So here's the map. I've got a simple topographic map as a background baseline map. I can change that and I'll show you how to change that in just a second to change on the layout frame. But for now, we'll just keep it topographic. So what I wanna do is map this little section of campus and just put it in a simple print layout. So right now I've got map up. I'm going to click my insert tab on the on the tool ribbon and then go to new layout. And then I'm just going to select eight and a half by 11 letter sheet. You can choose any of these different sizes. You can in fact even customize your own page size if you want a big, big layout or something really small. I'm just going to go with eight and a half by 11 standard. So here's my eight and a half by 11, and you'll notice it's an empty frame. Here's my map frame, and here's my layout frame, which is empty. So I need to add a map frame to the layout frame. So I'll just click map frame, and then here's my map frame that I've been working on. So I'll just click on that. Now what I can do is come to the map layout, and I've got a bounding box. I'm just holding the mouse button down, and I'm dragging a box. And here's the box that I've created. And once I do that, the map information from the map frame is automatically imported to the layout frame. You'll notice too that this map is a little bit askew to the left. That's okay because I'm going to put a legend here, but I, won't, I don't really like it that much. So I want to move this map over just a little bit. And the question is, how do I do that? Well, it's not particularly difficult. I'm simply going to go back to layout and then from here I'm going to click on my NDVI layer which is the one I'm working on and click activate and once I click activate I can now move this frame around like I would if I was in my typical map frame so I was here I'm going to move it over just slightly like this and that's the position I want and once I'm done with that I'll click the layout tab again close my activation and now I'm set to where I want this map to be. Now before we continue, let's go back to the whole concept of changing the base map. So we're here in the layout frame and there doesn't look like to be any controls here about inserting a new base map, but that's okay. All you have to do is click the map tab and if you click the map tab and then map up here in the ribbon you can control your base map so let's say i wanted to change this base map to imagery with labels so imagery with labels base map shows up and you can see that it's under my ndvi map of this same area if i click layout it's changed the layout as well so that's a simple way to change the base map even in the layout frame i want to keep it this way i want to keep it just as my topo map. I could experiment. Well, I mean, I could use the National Geographic map, but when I use the National Geographic map, you'll see that I'm too close and the National Geographic map doesn't give me that resolution range that I would like. So I'm just going to stick to the topographic map 
And that's the one I'm going to use for this project. So now what I need to do is start adding elements to the map. So I've got my insert tab here and I'm going to click on north arrow. And I'm just going to grab one of the north arrows and I've got another bounding box and I'll just drag it and put my north arrow here. It's a big north arrow, but that's okay. I need to know where I'm at. I'm going to grab a scale bar and put my scale bar down here. And if I wanted to make this north arrow smaller, I can do it by just grabbing the box. And I can make my scale bar bigger if I wanted to by just grabbing the box and pulling it. That's not doing too much. So there you can see that it dragged pretty far. I'm just going to put it back to here. Now I'm going to click on my legend pull down menu and I'm just going to grab the default legend one. And I'll make a nice box right here where my legend can be. So here's my legend. There's some things of the legend though that I don't like. For example, I've got this area here, but this, you don't see any of that on the image and that's because of my contents. I've got this clicked on. So I'm going to click this off and you'll notice that that disappears in the legend. Now, by the way, if I wanted to get rid of this NDVI and maybe just have the composite image instead, I could do that and I can change it on the map. Maybe I wanted the reflectance one instead the red reflectance, I can do that. And you'll notice too how the legend changes. In this case, I'm just gonna stick to the NDVI. Now you might be in a situation where you wanna have the composite map next to the NDVI map and the red reflectance map and the near infrared map and all on one print layout frame. You can do that and I've got another video and I'll link that link in the comment section below and that'll link to the multiple frames in a single layout and that video shows you how to do that. Okay, there's some other issues though of this legend that I'm not a fan of. I don't like all these significant figures on my NDVI and you can see that it's right here where it's negative 0.293461. I'm just going to double click on the symbology and when I do that I'm going to be taken to this window. I'm just going to get rid of, delete the 3461 and when I do that, you can see that it changes in the legend. Let me get rid of this for a second. It changes in the legend. It also changes in the map frame. So that's a very quick way to change what you're seeing in the legend if you don't like to see all these significant figures, for example. There's something else I don't like. I don't like this title of NDVI, small multi-spec. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to click on this guy and get rid of all this and change it to NDVI. You can see it changes in the legend. I could also right click and go to properties and then I can change the title in the properties windows as well. So that's another way to do it. There's something else though that I don't like and it's the title. It just says legend. <laughs> so I don't like that. I'm going to double click on this window again and notice the title says legend. I'm going to say NDVI of SWC legend. I like that title a little bit better and you can see that it changes here. Now you might not like the font. You can change the font pretty easily by coming here and clicking text symbol and you can change the appearance, the position, you can put a halo around the font in the legend if you want to. You've got a lot of power associated with really customizing this thing. What you can also do is if you click on legend here in the contents window, you notice that you've got legend here now in your toolbar. You can click legend there and now you've got all these different elements where you can change the font. So I'm going to change from Tahoma to Times New Roman. Um, I like bold so I'll make it a bold face. I'd like it to be centered so I'll click on centered. Ooh. But that doesn't actually look good because the NDVI is sort of funny here. So I'll go full left. So that's fine. So now I've got my legend and I'm not going to make any more changes to it. The other element that I'm missing right now is simply the title. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the insert already selected. I'll click dynamic text. And from dynamic text, I'm just going to go to name of map. And now what I'm going to do is just make my bounding box and I'll put it here for the title. If I double click on this guy, I can change the title. So this will be NDVI 
of SWC, and I'll just say southeast, cor or excuse me, southwest corner. It's small. Um, I don't like this, and I don't like it not being centered. I can change those variables here in this element area. But what I'm gonna do instead is just click here in the contents window where it says text. I'm actually gonna change that to title so I know what I'm dealing with. And I click on that, then I can click up here to text and now I can change it. So once again, I'll make this Times New Roman. I wanna make the font much bigger, so I'll make it 26 point and I wanna center it. And I can do some other little changes. I can move it here with my bounding box. Okay, that's it. I could put some credits here, the author of the map, but I'll just leave it as it is at the moment. And now it's ready to share. So I'm gonna click on share and export layout. I like GeoReference PDF, so I'll just stick with that one. I like PDF in general. Let me save this to the desktop just so that we can get easy access to it when I show it to you. So this is test layout and DVI, so that's what we'll save it as. Um, output is image, we're not gonna do that, we're not gonna compress anything, so <clears throat> if these are clicked on, I would advise you to just click it off. The DPI is fine, 100 dots, per, or excuse me, 150 dots per inch is fine for digital sharing. If I was printing this, I would probably change it to 300, but for our purposes right now, I'll just keep it 150. Um, I'll embed the fonts. Did see convert character marker symbols to polygon. That's fine. And export georeference information. Yes, I do. So I'm going to click and click embed fonts on convert character marker symbols to polygon. I'll click that on as well. And now I'll click export. So this won't take too long. It's a relatively small file. Okay. So once it's done, we can just go to the file and here it is on the desktop and I'll open it up. And voila, here is our map frame um, that includes all the elements that we put in there. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, I've got another video that shows you how to put multiple map frames on a single layout, and I will connect you to that in the comment section below. And if you want to see any of the other tutorial videos in this series, I'll be making them fairly often. Feel free to subscribe to the channel turn the notifications on, and then whenever a new video is up, then you'll get that automatic notification. All right, thanks a lot, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.